Thank you. It's easy to allow external forces to mess with our emotions and how we feel about life. Sometimes it can affect us so strongly that we lose our resolve, that we lose heart, act out of character, give up, or just grow weary. As this is true for us as individuals, the same thing can be true for us as a body, as a church. Therefore, we do not lose heart, Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Even though we are surrounded on all sides, we are not defeated. Even though we face difficulties, we will succeed. Even though we live in a temporary world, we do so with the hope of eternal life. Good morning, Ringled Methodist Church. Welcome on this very liquid sunshine kind of morning. Good to see you here in God's house. Grateful for everybody that's joining online. Michael, I promise to say hello to you. I hope uh, you're with us, and we'll check on that a little later on. It's not to embarrass him, but I, uh, nonetheless, we have a good, good little intimate thing going there. And, and uh, I know, actually, Michael's watching and participating in worship at home today. Um, Hey, let's pray before we begin. Have you ever had one of those mornings where you needed a lot of things to go well, and so you prepared and got up extra early to make sure they go well, and none of it works? <laughs> That's a good time to pray. <laughs> let's, let's, let's pray. Oh, Lord, I'm grateful. Um, I'm grateful for our, our brother Reed and, and for his family, and his represents so many here that are longtime members, and and, and normally when the doors are open, he and his family is here, is here. And we want folks just like him to make a commitment to be renewed. And then we've got folks, Lord, that are watching this morning that uh, maybe they've never even set foot in this building. Uh, but every week they're joining us online. And Lord, we want all those folks to be renewed. And then there's a whole bunch of people in between. May every person that calls this their church home join in in this time, this season, this intentional focus to seek renewal for each and every person, every one of us, so that in the end the whole church is experiencing renewal. We can't go back. Lord, thank you. In you we can go forward. A future with hope. Lead us now into your prepared future. In Jesus' name, amen. So this morning, uh, uh, our, our scripture focus was in the video, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and read it. Uh, and, and so, if you don't mind, would you would you stand for the reading of of the word? If you're physically able, please stand. And a couple verses from Second Corinthians chapter four, from the NIV version. This is verses 16 through 18. Again, you heard this in the video, but hear it again now in this form. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary. But what is unseen is eternal. This is the word of God for the people of God. Be to God. Amen. Please have a seat. Again, thank you for being here in this uh, preemptive, inclement weather <laughs> that we're experiencing this morning. Thank you for joining us online. I'm grateful to be in worship with everyone. Because from a certain perspective, as Reed also mentioned in his talk this morning on Be Renewed, for the last two years, many of us as individuals have felt like we are outwardly wasting away. We may have sensed that uh, the church in general is wasting away, or maybe our church 
is in some sense wasting away. We've, we've had moments like this, lower attendance, ministry reductions, the ending of some groups, some classes, even some ministries. No, not, that's not necessarily the case here at Ringgold. I don't think any of our ministries necessarily went away. But, but nonetheless, we've seen of other churches have, and, and some churches have closed, and others are facing dire financial uh, uh, consequences and circumstances. We do know, I'm sure, people that have left even our church, and, and it seems like they're, not, they're less than motivated to get back. And maybe you've even entertained some conversations, as I have, be it in people in this church or some other church, just form, for folks that were formerly involved somewhere and now are wondering if their involvement in the life of the church was, well, if it ever really mattered. See, this is bigger than just disconnection. This is about deconstruction. Uh, There's been a deconstruction of our norms, our social and religious bonds, things that outwardly held a lot of us together. Maybe not all of us, but for a lot of people, that's those outward things held them together. And there has been a slow wasting away of those things. So the question remains, what about that other part of the scripture? If outwardly we are wasting away, if we sense that or feel that, are we not also being renewed inwardly day by day? What's the state of your heart? Yes, yes, we can all look around us and see outside what's going on around us, but what's going on inside of you? Where's your focus? What's won your attention? Are you more now sure than ever that we have to look inwardly to the spiritual life? Because only what is unseen rather than what we can see. Only that which is eternal, the spiritual, the presence of God, personally experienced. Only that can lead us to renewal. I believe we're all in need of renewal. Maybe you're in a better place than I am, spiritually speaking, or or else. Or or maybe I'm in a better place, spiritually speaking, or somehow else with someone else. But but at the end of the day, after the last two two years, I can guarantee you all of us in some way need renewal. It's what this theme and this campaign's about. And we shouldn't be afraid of that as Christians, as spiritual people, because we know our spirituality teaches that renewal is part of life. It's part of our spirituality, the ebb and flow of all things. In fact, normally the church entertains ideas of renewal. We'll talk about going on spiritual retreats for renewal. We'll go to Emmaus. If you've, not, if you've heard of Emmaus, we'll, 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 go, we'll do short-term mission trips. We'll do spiritual pilgrimages. We're not afraid of renewal. It doesn't scare us. It's not anything new. But after these last two years and the dismantling of all these outward religious things, these things that held many of us together, that have perpetuated these things that perpetuated our faith from the outside, after the dismantling of these things, it has revealed to us what really is or perhaps is not going on on the inside of us. So we may be in different places, but assuredly we all need renewal. As your pastor, I'm praying and inviting you that each and every one of you take the time out, take the opportunity these next four weeks to truly reflect. I'm doing it. Truly reflect on your walk with Christ what your level of connection is, or disconnection, with God, with the church, with the the mission of God's church. I believe that if each of us do this and take it seriously, as we each look inwardly and begin to see where our own need of renewal is, we'll also see as part of that where the renewal perhaps of our marriage or the relationship with our children or grandchildren or our other kinship groups, we'll see the need for renewal in that Sunday school class or that small group or our close-knit group of friends or, or our ministry area. We'll see that there's renewal that's needed and eventually we'll see how the whole church is in need of and would benefit from renewal. You know, when we're in a great place with God, said this last week, it's important to remember. When we are in a great place with God, we find that our hearts are aligning with God's heart and we live our lives differently. We're more open, we're more courageous, we're more fruitful, we feel more whole, our outlook is different, we treat people differently, we serve differently, we share differently. Yes, we give differently too. And as the church as a whole, we're stronger. We're better able to engage in the mission and ministry in the community, because all of us together are in that better place of connection with the Lord. 
And so I believe if we'll be open to this individually, each of us, willing to personally take a serious look at our relationship with Christ, explore how God is calling each and every one of us, not just my neighbor, not just my friend, not just my family member, not just the person I know. No, how is God calling me to a greater level of faith and commitment and, yes, possibly generosity? And collectively, I think we can expect to move forward despite what is going around us. Inwardly being spiritually renewed and moving forward to a new exciting time of ministry and even more importantly, impact in our community. Ringgold Methodist Church knows how to do this. We can do it again. We can do it even more. We can be renewed. To start with, as Reed also mentioned, we, we have to be renewed in mission. Our mission is to develop, support, and share active relationships with Jesus Christ. What clear action steps, wonderful, wonderful, develop, support, share. What? Active relationships with Jesus Christ. That's inspiring to me. I hope it's inspiring to you. Do you have an active relationship with Jesus Christ or is it more passive? Both are relationships, but one is more appealing than the other. What would it mean for a church in a community like ours, in a culture like ours, to have a mission of saying, no, we're about active relationships with Jesus Christ? So many people claim a relationship, but is it active to have a church that is focused on developing such active relationships, supporting it, sharing them? I like that. That's good stuff. I believe it's the right mission statement for the church. The question is, will it be your mission in this church? It's time to be renewed in mission. It doesn't matter where you've been the last couple years or even what's going on in your life right now. You don't need to any longer evaluate yourself the way all human beings tend to do. In Christ, we are new creations. In Christ, you're a new creation. Be renewed. The old is gone. The new is coming. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become new. And so you are. You are an ambassador for Jesus. You can be. You are part of the mission. Let's be renewed together in mission, which leads to our focus today, to be renewed and take heart. Don't lose heart. Take heart. As bad as things can look or feel on the outside, nonetheless, on the inside, God can, God will renew us even day by day. Just a few verses from our scripture passage that we read, a few verses before it, and in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 through 11, we read these words. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but we're not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to the death of Jesus, for Jesus' sake rather, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. What a beautiful word picture of the dual experience of the Christian. We are always on the one hand facing outwardly some form of decay or decline or struggle. And yet on the inside we can experience at the same time the resurrecting power of Christ himself. A spiritual force of renewal. And so take heart. Don't lose heart. Take heart. And what I imagine that to mean is enlarge your heart. Take heart. Enlarge your heart. Being renewed individually means our being renewed through allowing our heart to expand, to, to hold, to catch, to retain more of this resurrecting power that God is trying to give us. You see, part of the reason that we normally are in need of renewal anyway, regardless of the last two years, even when things aren't as unusual as they have been, is because you and I have a tendency to plateau, plateau in our spiritual growth. We have a tendency to do the same things over and over again, spiritually in our faith walk, and really all parts of our life, actually. But when it comes to our spiritual practices, we'll do the same things, or we'll even do less <laughs> we'll even do less than what we have done in the past. And we have this tendency to expect God to do more with it. We'll do the same things. 
or even less. And in seeking renewal, expect God will do more with it. In other words, we expect to experience the same sense of God being full, God being overflowing in our lives, the Spirit filling us up and flowing over. We expect that without our ever changing. We want God to pour more into us, to have more God, without ever giving God more room in our lives to do that work. A few years ago, I came up with this particular illustration, and about a month, maybe a month and a half ago, I ran into a guy that was part of that church back then, and uh, I had forgotten this illustration, but he hadn't. And he pointed it out to me, and I thought, this is great. I know exactly when I'm going to use it again. You see, we recognize... As I said last week, that God is not the one that holds back. If we are represented here on this glass and the water is the Spirit of God, and there's a time in our life when God has filled us up and to the point that we'll even overflow. But the thing is, if we don't ever grow so that we can hold more of God, even though God keeps pouring into us, our experience is the same. Oh, God's pouring into us, but our experience is the same. That's the way we felt before. We don't feel renewed. In fact, what we feel is, well, it's the same old thing. You know, same old preaching, same old Sunday school, same old worship. Not realizing that God is pouring His Spirit out. Oh, there's more God. Problem is, we're staying the same. I had an experience once. Well, I've had many experiences like this, but... But I actually had an experience one time in one of the churches that I served where on the same day in the same service, and we had three services, the same day in the same service, we had one person put on their comment card, Pastor, we need to be praying that the Spirit come back and fill this place again and revive us. It's just, it's not, it's just, it needs to get back to the way it used to be. The same day, the same service, another person wrote on a prayer card, Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Spirit's back. (laughs) The truth is, God isn't the one holding back. God is with us. Now, listen, there's always opportunities, and it's a good thing to, 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 to constantly work on being better in youth ministry and children's ministry and worship ministry and Sunday school asking us, how can I preach better and teach better, and how can we all together be in ministry together, you know, critique and, and trying to get better. That's an okay thing. That's a, it could be very healthy. But in this illustration, clearly, that's not what's going on, is it? I mean, two people with radically different experiences, I don't think that has to do with critiquing how well I'm preaching that day, even though maybe I needed to preach better. Are you getting my point? The the, the illustration is one person has this experience where they're feeling the sense of overflowing presence of God, and the other is praying for it. And yet both are thinking it's coming from the outside instead of the inside. Outwardly, we are wasting away But inwardly, we're being renewed day by day. Take heart. Don't lose heart. Take heart. It's time to grow. Let your heart become bigger. Get bigger. Have more room, more capacity to hold more of what God wants to give you. And all of a sudden, now, now we feel God, yes, the renewal, the power of God. I feel, I'm filled up with the Lord once again. I'm overflowing once again. Not because God decided to pour. God's been pouring into me the whole time. I decided to grow and get bigger. Let my capacity to hold and retain and be filled with the Lord. So that he would renew me. Being renewed, sisters and brothers, in the heart means that each individual believer allows their heart to expand, to hold, to catch, to retain more of the renewing power, the spirit that God is trying to give us. Now, how do we do this? Well, the short answer is spiritual disciplines. 
Anybody that's been in church for any length of time knows this. And, and friends, you could almost pick just about any spiritual disciplines you want. And God's going to renew us through them. But I wanted to talk to you today about five very specific practices because of how personal they are. And to remember them, I'm going to suggest that you think of your fist over your heart because I've been told that our fists are, are about the size of our heart, physically. And the idea is if we might take heart, if we might enlarge our heart through these things, God would fill us up. If, if, that if we would concentrate on the, on the idea of prayer and Scripture and serving and generosity and witnessing, our heart could grow. If we could focus on prayer and on Scripture, on serving and generosity and witnessing, our heart gets bigger. As I consider how in my life I need more or can have more room for these things or more room for more of those things if I already have them. My spiritual heart will enlarge and have room for God to fill me up with his renewing spirit. If you checked your email this morning, I sent you a, an email already. If we have your email as a church. And what I did is I attached this handout. It's God-centering prayer. Because we all need help with prayer sometimes. It's got a nice front cover and then lots of helps on the back. We'll put it on social media. We'll put it on the app if we can. I believe we can. We'll give that a shot. We'll put it on uh, our website if we can, or maybe a link to it. But check your, check your email, because this prayer guide, I want you to encourage you to read over it. I feel strongly that whether you're a pastor of 26 years or a brand new baby Christian, we all could use a little help with a refocus on prayer. There are times when our prayer life just sort of gets in a rut. There are times when we need new ideas and new ways of thinking about prayer. And by the way, we also have copies of these here physically in person, uh, at least out in that lobby, if not in the back one in the front lobby. So help yourself uh, on your way out uh, this morning. And of course, there are times when we just need to learn how to pray. What I mean by that is there's times where we need to learn how to, to go back and forth between personal worship and personal prayer, to go back and forth between speaking to God and listening to God, to go back and forth from pouring out our thoughts and our emotions to God and just being still in the presence of God in adoration. We need to learn how to pray. And wherever you are in your faith journey, I can guarantee you that a personal renewal process has to include some increased capacity, some sort of growth in the manner of prayer. Where does your container where does your heart need to enlarge with regard to prayer so that God's Spirit might fill you up more fully? Going forward, what might be your plan to be renewed in personal prayer? And then there's Scripture. What's your personal plan for reading and studying the Scripture? I'm not talking about group Bible study. We'll talk about that in a few weeks. That's a good thing. Bible study is a wonderful thing. But I'm talking about your own personal relationship with the Scripture. It's important. Where are you daily seeking God in your own reading and studying and reflecting and perhaps even memorizing of Scripture? Where does the role of Scripture, how does it, what's that role need to play? Or, or a bigger role need to be in your personal life so that God can fill you up with His renewing power? And then there's serving. And here again, I'm not talking about serving in the church. I'm not trying to get you to sign up to serve. Not today. That's a good thing to sign up to serve somewhere, to be an administrator. That's a wonderful thing. We'll talk about that in the future. What I'm talking about today is how do you see yourself? I've encouraged this church over time to, to move away from the use of the word volunteer and to use the word servant. Not had a lot of success, but I'm going to continue to encourage you all to do that. Because the disciples didn't volunteer for Jesus. They, they became servants of Christ. And it's not so much semantics as it is about our conversion, where we begin to think, look, I'm not just going to go help out God or help out the church, but I primarily see myself as a servant of Jesus Christ. Wherever I go, with whomever I meet, I'm His hands and feet. 
How might God grow you through a servant attitude where you pray, Lord, your will be done on earth that is in heaven. Start with me, my relationships, my life, my thoughts and words and actions. How might God fill you, increase, if you would increase your capacity to be a servant? How might God fill you up in a brand new way with renewing power? Prayer, Scripture. Serving, generosity. And again, today I'm not talking about tithing or proportional giving to the church. It's a wonderful thing. We can talk about that here later on in a few weeks. But, but, but what I'm talking about today is, is our willingness to just be more generous with our words, with our attitudes, with our livelihood, with our time, our energy. Yes, our financial resources are too, of course. How might... Our willingness to grow in being a more generous person, increase our capacity for God's Spirit to fill our lives. How might our willingness to be a blessing to others increase our ability to receive God's blessing to us? And finally, for our heart to grow is witness. And again, I'm not talking about inviting people to church, as good as that is. We'll talk about that too later on. What I'm talking about is witness. Sharing your active relationship with Jesus with other people. And that can happen in the church. That can happen in a Sunday school class. That can happen in a small group. That can happen in a parking lot. That can happen in your marriage. That can happen with your own children. It can happen with your friend, your, your children's friends when they come over to play. It can happen with a neighbor. It can happen with a coworker. There's limitless opportunities for us to speak the name of Jesus, not in a preachy way, not even worried about the results, just sharing as best we can in a very personal, vulnerable way. I believe in the unseen God because of Jesus of Nazareth, and I understand the unseen God through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And however you would express that, however you would express that, is your witness. Friends, if we want God to renew us, if we want God to renew us, we can't stay the same. We have to be willing to grow and let God fill us more with what He wants to give us. Enlarge our capacity. Don't lose heart. Take heart. Enlarge your capacity for all that God would want to give us and his powerful renewing spirit. For he can renew us, though we are wasting away outwardly, inwardly renewed day by day. This is the promise. As Reed mentioned in a few weeks, we will have Commitment Sunday, February 13th. We hope everybody can come. Love for good in-person worship that uh, day. But if you're joining us online, and some people are far away, they won't be in person because they're several states away. But, but regardless, whether you're in person or online, we hope for a good attendance, for everybody to be there, to participate. And we'll turn in commitment cards. And those commitment cards will have on it what we're uh, committed to giving. But see, what it represents is much more than a dollar sign. It's about all of this stuff. That's why we don't have a financial goal. Our goal isn't financial. Our goal is, hey, everybody just participate. Hey, everybody just take take it serious. And whatever you put, may it reflect the journey you're on. Because that's really what giving's about anyway, isn't it? God doesn't need our money. What does God want? Our heart. And so anytime we give, whether it's in a campaign or not, it should be a reflection of our commitment to Him. And our willingness to be renewed and grow and live for the Lord. And so this is not about what we can get from you. This is about what the church hopes for you, that you would be renewed. And as Reed also said, today's not the day for that commitment. Today is simply the day to make a commitment to make one. May you begin this journey with me. May you get into a Sunday school class, talk about Be Renewed, or some other group in this week, whether in person or online, have some good conversation about renewal, renewal as individuals, each and every one of us, 
and how that might become renewal for the whole church. Let's not lose heart. Let's take heart and enlarge our capacity for what God wants to give us. Let's not focus so much on what's going on all around us, but rather on the eternal presence of God who can renew within us, renew us from within day by day. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, thank you that in you we have new life always before us. Whether our bodies are failing, whether the systems we've created are a wreck, whether some aspect of our life seems to be wasting away or not profiting, Lord, you can renew us. Inwardly, we can find a boldness, a newness, a fullness as we have in the past, but even more so. Lord, help us not make the same mistake of doing the same old things or sometimes even less than what we've done and expecting you to do more with it. Help us to make room right now, make a commitment to make a commitment to, to make room in our lives for more of you that we might be able to receive and hold on to all that you would want to give us. And not only give to us, but Lord, through us, give to others. Thank you. Lord, may your spirit renew us and renew this church for your glory, for the sake of our souls and all those souls that need a church just like this one. In Jesus' name, amen.